which felt good because Milo is like 1800 and I was like yeah I'm gonna help Milo <laughs> but uh, okay let's uh, jump straight in so hello and welcome back to the Grand Masters League this is round six and we're on the penultimate set for the week between CKF Tim in red over to the right he is playing as Huns today and his opponents Ming playing as Huns aka good boy playing as blue over to the left of the map so we've got a Hun war and the map indeed is Baltic more. Uh, we've seen a lot of action on Baltic actually. Uh, we saw Baltic yesterday between um, the Viper and Doubt. That was a pretty good game. And we also saw Baltic with Fiege and Tim as well. And Fiege did beat Tim on Baltic. Uh, if you remember the Mongol versus Hun war that was had on that map. Uh, Tim deciding to go with Huns today when he chose Mongols last time. Perhaps he's thinking well you know what I lost my last, uh, my last game against Huns. I'm gonna play as Huns and hopefully I won't do so badly. Um, so yeah, this is Ming's home map, so we'll see how it goes for him. Of course, uh, usually players tend to win their home maps, uh, obviously it's their, their choice of map against their opponent, and they have the advantage in the fact that they can choose a map that their opponent might not be so good at. But you have to bear in mind that um, not always is that the case. Sometimes we've seen players lose their home maps uh, consecutively and it's kind of funny to think that that would actually happen. But it does, it happens and uh, perhaps that might be the case today. We'll have to wait and see. There's only one way to find out and that is to watch the recorded game like we are doing. So we'll get there eventually. We will get there eventually. Um, so yeah, we do have red for Tim over on the right. Let's have a look at his map real quick. Um, to be fair, it doesn't look so bad. He's got gold on both sides, so if he does get forwarded at any point, he can quite easily take gold from another side, which is not too bad at all. And of course, plenty of wood lying around as well, and it's pretty common that we'll see grushing going on on these kind of maps because there is such a large body of water in the center. Ming's map, uh, again, not bad at all. He's got gold very close by, but at the back, he's also got second gold at the back and a gold at the front as well. So even if Tim does come forwards, which is unlikely, uh, he will be able to take gold at the back, of course, and that is pretty much what's to be expected uh, if, if someone does come forwards. But then again, they've both got easy walls, so I don't think we'll see any forwarding unless they really have to. Of course, yesterday with the Doubt versus the Viper, Doubt tried to sneak a villager and go forwards, but of course it wasn't to be because the Viper saw it coming a mile off and he could easily wall up. So maybe these players will wall up, maybe they won't. If they, if they see their opponent is stopping creating boats, for instance, then they might wall up. We'll have to see. But really, it's a little bit of a waste to spend time walling and spending wood on palisade walls or stone on, on stone walls uh, to wall up when your opponent isn't going to attack you. So it's probably best just to leave the wall until you either A, know that they're, gonna, they're coming, or B, that, uh, that you think they might be on their way. So we're going to speed things up a little bit uh, just while things get underway and I imagine we'll see three slash four docks from both. Um, it's been quite common that Tim hasn't been so confident on water. It's been kind of funny because I think if I remember correctly, Tim played versus Doubt and he too was not so, or Jordan even, uh, on this map and he wasn't very confident with the water at all. Nice little harass by Tim here though attacking that villager and if he's actually lucky he could actually take that villager out before it reaches the TC it's only got 4 HP left he's gonna take it down to 1 can he get one more hit can he do it yes he can and he's gonna run that was nice by Tim right there he's gonna now be able to dodge the arrow fire from the TC and that's really nice he managed to delay the dock he managed to kill a villager and that's gonna put him ahead quite nicely indeed he's luring his second boar at the same time as that and he's got his first dock up already Ready, making full use of this fisherman. Um, very nicely done taking the shore fish there to make sure that no villager time is wasted whatsoever. If he's going over there, he may as well gather some fish as well, and that is exactly what he has done. And we'll see some fishing ships coming out for both right now. Uh, Ming doing exactly the same, taking the shore fish by the docks to so make full use of that villager gathering time, which uh, really does make a lot of sense if you think about it. 
I think uh, also one thing to mention, which while well, I remember, um, you see how in these uh, in these maps the fish are really sort of uh, clump clumpy. They're not all evenly spaced. I think in the Forgotten Empires, a lot of the maps have actually been fixed so that the fish are sort of evenly spread out. So for instance, over here, Tim doesn't actually have that much fish in this area very close to his dock over to the left. Whereas Ming, he's got a lot of fish right here in front. If he'd have docked a little bit further up, then he wouldn't have much fish close by at all. So I think that's for fixed in the Forgotten Empires, the maps that have been changed should have evenly distributed fish, but uh, that's on a little bit of a tangent anyway, um, just sort of if, while I remembered, while I remembered. Um, and yeah, so both these guys are going to try and get up to the fuel age pretty quickly, as they will want to get their grush going underway, but of course, you can't go up to the fuel age too early, otherwise your grush is going to be too weak and it won't make a difference anyway at the end of the day. But uh, quite a lot of extra sheep on this map, which is great. Tim's still got five sheep left, and he should be up to feudal yeah, There we go. Right now on eight minutes, and sending shed loads of villagers to gather lots of wood so we can start grushing the hell out of Ming. <laughs> Not taking any uh, gold just yet. He'll probably send a few villagers over there shortly, as will Ming once he has finished up his boar which is actually still not finished yet. I'm surprised. He took more sheep because he was delayed getting that second ball, which is kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, just lots of scouting going on. Really not so much out of the ordinary right now. Three villagers over to gold for Tim. Likely to be the same for Ming very shortly. There we go. There's his three going to go over right now. And oh, never mind. I thought he was going to send three over. I'm sending waiting quite a while actually to send any villagers over. He's not far behind um, Tim in actually going up but he's not sending any villagers over to gold just yet which is kind of interesting because usually you want to send villagers over to gold a little bit earlier because if you have a look um, Tim over here already sending three over but Ming does not have loom <laughs> so he saved himself a little bit of gold not only did he lose a villager though because of that uh, he's delayed himself going on to gold but he has got a little bit more gold in the bank he can afford three ships straight away uh, kind of interesting that he didn't go for loom obviously Tim has so he's found himself 50 gold less at this stage but he sent villagers over to gold a little bit earlier on as well kind of interesting to me that Ming didn't go for loom perhaps that's his sort of strategy for doing a very good dr a grush we'll have to see who manages to take the water I guess. Um, Ming with already the third dock going up. Tim up to the feudal age first. Two galleys coming out of course. But Ming um, where is he? There we go. Ming just about to hit feudal now with the three docks in just a second. And he should be able to afford plenty of galleys here. But the question is can he keep galley production up whilst this dock goes up? That is the question. The game sound seems very loud. It's weird. I don't know if it's just my headphones being very loud or not. An extra villager over to gold here and Usually you see only three villagers to gold while there's three docks, but Ming's sending an extra villager over to gold already, and I find that kind of interesting because I think he's going to be a little bit short of wood um, at the moment with that extra villager on gold. We'll have to see who actually ends up with the better grush. Tim's uh Tim's galley is going to come out first, of course. They're going to be on the water in just a second. His third dock is going up, and he's going to be sending more villagers over to wood as well, with two lumber camps already up. He might split a third fairly shortly. Ming on two lumber camps, of course, as well. It's better to have two lumber camps than one, otherwise villagers will start bumping into each other and all oh, hell will break loose. But uh, I'm interested why Ming is sending so many villagers over to gold at the moment. Um, he should be able to have plenty of gold coming in with for three docks. Obviously, Tim only on the three gold collectors right now, managing to make galleys consistently from all three docks. So kind of interesting to me. I think Ming might have a little bit too much gold income at the moment, but whether or not he'll balance that out with an extra dock, I don't know. Sending that many villagers to gold already sort of indicates that he is going to go for four docks, whereas Tim might just keep two of the three for the time being, or he will add a fourth and then send more villagers over to gold. We'll have to wait and see for that one. Three more galleys about to come out. Who is going to take the water control? That is the question. Um, I'm going to be interested to find out because they're both on three docks at the moment. Tim has the slight advantage. He's got the score lead. I guess that's because of his scouting. 
Mm, potentially, that could be his scouting. His scouting is a little bit more, I think. Uh, Ming hasn't done much scouting of the lake. He's not scouted much of Tim's side, whereas Tim sort of scouted a lot more. So I'd put his sc higher score down to scouting mainly at this moment. Um, he's got a couple more galleys out on the water, but really, they're not that much difference between the two at the moment. Sending another village over to gold now, and the fifth over to gold as well. Ming just deciding to send the five a little earlier. And as you can see, he's got a bit more gold in the bank at the moment. But he's going to be able to continue galley production either way. And Tim going to chase him down, because he has got the most galleys right now. And uh, Ming, of course, just sticking on three docks, adding the fourth right now. So he is going to go for four. Um, kind of thought he would, because he did send those extra villagers to gold earlier on. And Tim sending five over to gold now as well. So he is likely to go for four docks as well. It's also important that you send an extra couple of villagers over to gold if you want to get Fletcher nice and early. Um, if you want to get fletching, of course, you're going to have to have 50 gold to spare. And getting 50 gold to spare whilst you're constantly creating galleys can sometimes be a little bit awkward. As you can see here, Tim not actually creating galleys from all three dots now, slowing it down so he can get fletching. And once fletching is done uh, or clicked on, he can continue galley production. And really, it's kind of neck and neck on the water. Not so much difference between the two at the moment right now. Ming, no blacksmith just yet, so Tim is going to have plus one a little bit earlier, and that might help him out in the long run, though Ming does already have his fourth dock up, and Tim just adding his fourth on now. Um, but I do believe that Tim does have the most galleys. Ming on nine, Tim on nine as well. It's absolutely completely neck and neck, but Ming, of course, with his fourth dock up a little bit earlier, might be able to get more galleys out on the water, but we do have Tim now with a nice little snipe over here. Sending his galleys over towards Ming's dock, and Ming's army's out of position, so he's going to aim for Tim's fishing ships. And fishing ships, uh, taking fishing ships out is always a good idea if you can do it. But uh, Ming did lose quite a few galleys there, and that was a little bit of, well, not an error, but it was a nice play from Tim, managing to catch Ming's army off guard. His army split up, and although he is taking out a couple of fishing ships from Tim, he is finding himself a little bit out of position with half of his army and they are going to be taken out quite easily if Tim does catch him up. But of course now Tim going to lose his four fishing ships, Ming's fishing ships still alive and that's going to give him a nice little boost uh, when he goes up to or decides to consider going up to the castle age which should be in the back of both of these players minds right now. They are going to want to reach castle fairly reasonably soon. Ming now with the higher population, the score gap closing up just a little bit as he has had that fourth dock out a little longer so 11 ships on the water for him and uh, Tim on 11 as well. It's so so close but of course after losing those fishing ships it's going to slow Tim's economy down just a little bit. Nothing too major. He should be alright and if Ming can keep his fishing ships alive then he is going to gain a little bit more of an advantage the longer they stay alive for. Um, we'll see how he makes that pay off. We should see in theory Ming going up to the castle age first. He does have less food at the moment but let's see, is he taking berries just yet? Yeah, starting to take berries right now. And once the berries are gone, he might seed a few more farms. Uh, Tim starting to take berries as well, but a few less berry collectors. So we could see Tim continuing galley production a little bit more. We see a lot of galleys being queued up. Ming probably still managing to queue them all up. But maybe with all these villagers on berries and starting to sow some farms now, could slow his galley production down a little bit. And that's something you've got to be very cautious of. If you lose your fishing ships, which uh, of course Tim has done, you've got to be very careful not to overinvest in farms and end up finding yourself, ah, oh, uh oh, I've not got enough wood to keep galley production going. And it's very important to keep galley production going. A little bit of micro war on the water, nothing too major. Both of them trying to send uh, their boats back and forth, hit some volleys off, and just trying to generally avoid volleys if they can. Ming gonna lose the fishing ship now, and of course Ming's gonna want to keep them alive, because that's an advantage that he's got over Tim right now. Both of them trying to do a little bit of micro. Great work from Ming. Um, Tim actually missing all of those volleys. So is Ming, however, and they're both going back and forth 
or try to do what damage they possibly can. Looks like uh, Tim might be a little bit worse off here. He's starting to retreat. He's definitely got more sh less ships on the water just there. If we have a look at the number. We've got what's that? Three, six, eighteen for Ming right there. Tim uh, are trying to attack with eleven, but he has got more back here as well. I think Ming though doing a pretty good job of keeping his galley production up. He's got more galleys on the water right now. Whether they're or not they're weaker, I think they are weaker because he has lost a lot of HP on some of these. Um, maybe he will be able to win the battle if they do, uh, if he does some good micro. But we've got to consider now Castle Age. They're both going to be thinking about it. It's going to be in their minds. And oh, Ming, very nice indeed. Going to kill a couple of villagers on these berries. And that is a nice little pick right there. Two villagers for free. And every villager he can get is going to help him in the long run. Really nicely done. Preventing Tim from taking berries there. And now Tim, either A, going to have to continue taking berries with the risk of being sniped. Or B, he's going to sow some more farms and slow his galley production down. Uh, he might just be able to keep the galley production going. It depends how many farms he goes for. He's got to be very careful because he really does not want to lose water. He's going to go for Ming's fishing ships though. There's another one down and Ming still has two to uh, two on the on the water. But he's going to lose a couple of galleys here for free and Tim's going to be pretty happy with that I think. And uh, a little bit of an engagement now. Who is going to be able to micro the best? Tim managing to take out one galley just there. A little volley there from Ming, but it misses. And they're both going to be trying to micro their asses off, really, to try and do what damage they can. A couple of very low HP. Well, that one especially. Very low HP. Three left. One hit from one of these, and uh, it should be about gone. Uh, or, or two hits, even. But uh, right now... It is fairly close on the water, and I think it's going to stay close for quite some time. Both these guys doing very, very similar builds. And then coming in now, should be able to sink another ship, perhaps. Soaks all loose. I think he must have hit there. And it's just hard to see whether they're actually hitting or not, or whether the galleys are just absorbing all the arrows. It's all just about massive micromanagement. With galleys, you can't just patrol them, otherwise they will end up uh, getting killed. It's all about micro. And both of them microing very well trying to do what they can and it's interesting I always find it sorry interesting to see micro wars because it's amazing that they're microing at the same time they're still working on their economies and Ming here coming off a lot better off than Tim he's managed to take out a lot of Tim's ships he's certainly got the number advantage right here and Tim is not looking so good on the water all of a sudden deciding to attack outside of Ming's docks Ming's reinforcements coming straight out of course and now Ming pretty confident that he's got the water here I think He's going to lose his final fishing ship, and it looks like Tim continuing to keep galleys inside of his docks, but having half of his army over here and half fighting or getting cornered is not so good. Ming now, of course, going to take the score lead, and Tim going to lose a lot of galleys right here, and that is certainly not good for him. He's got more galleys over here, but now he's lost half of his army, and Ming's got his whole army together. He's going to find himself in a very, very tough spot, as Ming is obviously going to have a huge advantage on the water right now. Who is going to reach Castle first, though? Looks like uh, Tim is actually in the lead with the food count at the moment. He only needs another 200 food, and he should be absolutely fine. Tim looking to kill another villager. It looks like he's going to get him, and that's a, a, small, a small win for him, I guess you could say. There's the archery range from Ming Barracks and Archery Range, and he's going to be going up to Castle in just a second. Lots and lots of gold. He might decide to buy some food here, actually, um, which could work out as obviously if you mine a lot of gold and then buy food you've not got to spend any wood on making farms or as much wood on making farms and that way you can create more galleys yeah, it could work, could work uh, Ming probably feeling pretty confident here he's not seeing anything or any galleys from Tim whatsoever it doesn't look like Tim is creating any galleys but Tim is going up to the castle age right now and Ming is slightly further behind he is just buying food as you can see at the market right there he bought a little bit of food now he's going to click up and he should yeah there we go click up right now and continue to make galleys for the time being of course once he reaches castle age he will want to make sure he gets war galley and uh, and bodkin arrow which uh, should happen pretty much straight away so he's going to need enough gold for that but right now he should have plenty of gold and wood to continue galley production there really isn't much reason to stop producing galleys because your opponent they could have more galleys being saved up over here or more get another dock perhaps creating galleys at the back that you don't know about and all of a sudden they get up to the castle age they upgrade to war galley and 
and you find yourself out of a navy and suddenly having to create galleys from behind, that's not the situation you want to get in. Which is uh, interesting because Ming is still not creating galleys yet. So he's kind of saving up, saving his food, uh, wood I think, rebuilding his lumber camps, perhaps he's upgrading a few things. He's getting second archery range as well, making a few more farms right now. And he might decide to even go for some cavalry archer because, as you can see, Tim is not actually walled. And Ming could easily make a few cavalry archers back here, break down his wall, and then go and... Uh, attack Tim at home and it's unusual to see Tim not walling so it's very interesting to see why or to see him not wall it's like what's going on here he's not walling what what is this but uh yeah Tim about to hit the castle age not long now and as you can see he is continuing galley production and Ming is not so Ming probably should be creating galleys here there we go he's starting to create gra galleys again um, I thought for a second he would stop altogether, and I was like, no, Ming, you'll lose the water if you do that. Tim now up to the Castle Age, War Galley being researched, more galleys on the way out, and he'll have War Galley in just a sec, Bodkin Arrow as well, and he might even retake the water from Ming here, because he will have War Galley in just a second. Tim lost a couple of docks, but he's rebuilt them, and now Ming is slowing down galley production, which is a little bit worrying for me, but we will see him going for War Galley right away, we'll see Bodkin Arrow as well, of course and we might see him start to make some cavalry archers and go for an attack on Tim's base back here. Tim with the second town centre on this gold, a university for ballistics of course and no third town centre just yet. He probably does not have the wood for it and indeed he does not. And there we go, we've got War Galley, we've got Bodkin Arrow and Tim looks like he's about ready to engage. I don't know whether he's got the numbers here though uh, because Ming will have War Galley in just a second and he will have more that galleys on the water. He's already got Bodkin Arrow and and these are going to be War Galley in just a second. You can literally get War Galley, turn around, and Tim is going to find himself in a bad situation as he's severely outnumbered now. And he might just lose his navy again, which is certainly not going to be good for him. So, yep, seeing a couple of cavalry archers out of Ming right now. They're going to be slow to come out as he's lacking a bit of wood right now. He's got so much gold though, and maybe he could buy some more wood. I don't know. At the moment, he does have an absolute ton of gold. I don't think it's really necessary for him to have that much but uh, we're seeing another town centre out of him as well that makes it two apiece and maybe we'll see the third town centre before long. Ming still managing to hold the water though and it looks like he might continue to do so he still has quite a lot of galleys out and he should be able to uh, hold the water for some time right now. Continue oh no I thought he would still be making some cavalry archer it's uh, interesting to me that he's got so much gold it's like why have you got so much gold? Um, it's a little bit worrying that he has that much. Um, perhaps you should have a couple more villagers on wood and make some more um, cavalry archer instead. Maybe. But who am I? I don't know what I'm talking about, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, a hell of a lot of gold for Ming right now. Tim with quite a lot of gold as well. I mean, having a lot of gold isn't really a problem. It's good to have a lot of gold. But it's uh, not so necessary to have, you know, like 2, 3k in the bank and, and not really spend it until later on. Ming could be creating a few more cavalry archer now and getting ready to attack Tim. He's still very open at this side. A couple of cavalry archer on this side would do so much damage. And uh, Tim, of course, with only two TCs right now, is very open to a lot of harassment because he isn't walled. And Ming, on the other hand, is walled. So please, Tim, uh, Ming, make some more cavalry archers and uh, do yourself a favor. Making a lot of galleys though, I think this is his main concentration for now, careening being researched as well, Tim doesn't have careening and it doesn't look like he's getting careening either, but he is starting to make quite a few more war galleys and he should be looking to try and take the water, I don't know whether he will or not though, Ming finally getting loom, I think it's about time, <laughs> I can't believe he's only just got loom at 28 minutes in, but I guess that saved himself some gold in the start, and uh, I believe that Ming has the large navy, 27 warships for him, Tim on 26, it's very very close, Tim's starting to catch up massively here, and I'm actually surprised he managed to catch up in water so quickly. I thought Ming would just keep more villagers on wood and continue to produce more war galleys, but obviously I'm wrong and uh, he didn't decide to do that. University for him coming up, I think Tim probably already has ballistics, um, it's not being researched, he might already have it, uh, I can't say for sure, and in about a minute we should see a uh, handcart unless it's already been researched. Uh, 30 minutes, I believe, good time to research handcart if you can afford it. 
it's not that expensive and it does really make your economy a lot more efficient so it's certainly worth getting around the 30 minute mark and Ming still making a lot of galleys, trying to keep the water control in his favour. And really, uh, they're still fighting for the water control, but there are no fishing ships out on the water yet, uh, or still. Um, they've not made any more since they lost their initial four, so it's still quite a big battle for the water here. But I really do think, there we go, Ming should make some cavalry archers and go and attack Tim at his base. It's going to help him out so much, and he should be able to do a lot of damage with it. Ballistics on the way as well, 70% for that, and Ming probably not going to attack until he has got ballistics, because I think Tim might already have it, and if that is the case, then he doesn't want to attack Tim without ballistics, but Tim doesn't have ballistics, so if Ming does start to attack right now, he's got the ballistics he just researched, if he sends his army out right now, he should be able to beat Tim in a straight up fight with ballistics now, because there is nothing Tim can do to micromanage out of the way, um, so that's kind of interesting that Tim is a bit slower to get ballistics and I think Ming now is it's the time for Ming to attack before it upgrades for Tim but of course Tim 75% he's gonna have it in a second anyway and it wouldn't surprise me if it's very close on the water Ming's starting to gain an advantage in score he's starting to make more cavalry archer which is really really good um, but he's not attacking with them just yet upgrading padded archer armor right now and uh, that is going to give him a little bit of longevity once he does get into Tim's base because Tim is on the two, three, sorry, three TCs, uh, but still with a lot of open site, uh, open villages here, they could very easily be killed off by a few cavalry archer uh, because Tim is still not walled. Here we go then, Tim going to come in, who is going to win this fight? Tim of course, knowing he's got ballistics, is going to go engage, it makes a lot of sense and it's very hard to see the number of ships here for me, it's something along the lines of 35, Tim on 35. 4, 41 even, wow, Tim really does have a lot of ships on the water right now, but who is going to win this battle? It is very close, but bear in mind, Ming does have careening here, and that's going to help him out a little bit. That is going to nullify a whole attack from each of these um, galleys, and I actually do think Ming here may actually come off a little bit better from this engagement. It's pretty hard to call. Tim losing a lot of ships here, but Ming might not be able to hold on. They're being reinforced very quickly, and it's so, 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 so close. I think it's going to be Tim's battle. It looks like it is. 28 warships for Tim. Ming falling down to 15. It looks like Tim is going to retake the water here, and that is a little bit worrying for Ming right now. He's going to transport some of these units around, though. Get around this wall, and it does look, yep, Tim is going to finish that bar battle off. He did have a lot more galleys going into that fight, and even with careening, Ming wasn't able to hold Tim off for long enough there, and Tim managing to take the water back, which is really, really good for him. But Ming now sending a villager and some cavalry archer forward. Tim not expecting this, I don't think. I'm surprised he's not walled, as I said earlier, but uh, it looks like Ming now not in a good shape at all. He's not making any more galleys whatsoever. He's got a lot of wood. He can continue galley production quite easily, but Tim with too many galleys out on the water right now for him to really um, come back without making a lot of docks and saving the galleys up inside. He might just finish a couple of these galleys off here. Tim, um, a little bit of a mess making, uh, sending those off up to the north and leaving these behind, but you should clear that up pretty quickly. And now we see Ming coming in and archery range forwards for him, and he's going to kill off a few villagers here. Of course, these cavalry archers do have plus two, and Ming seeing the attack coming in, he's going to run, of course he's going to run. And Ming now does have ballistics as well, so it will mean his cavalry archer can actually do quite some damage to these villagers as they're retreating, as they're more likely to hit, managing to kill one villager so far, and he's going to be hard pressed I think to kill a lot more villagers as the rest are fairly close to TCs. But this is kind of interesting because Tim doesn't even have a barracks yet, he's just getting his barracks up right now, he's going to find himself losing a few villagers quite much, well, a lot faster than he would like, still sending the cavalry archer in, and he should now be able to get, I don't know, four or five villagers for free, an archery range coming up for Ming at the front as well, and he's going to be making more cavalry archers right here, he knows that right now he has lost the water, and it's certainly not good for him, lots of archery ranges coming up at the back for Tim here, four right now, and uh, Tim losing quite a lot of villagers over here, which is really not good for him, but Tim now does have the water control, he could could start adding in some fishing ships that might help him out quite a bit and there really are no galleys left at all for Ming right now. 
Ming, of course. Gonna have to be careful of these villagers close to the shore. He's gonna wanna make sure that they stay alive. And he does have three town centers of his own up right now. So this attack, it's kind of got to work. Otherwise, Ming is gonna find himself in a very bad position indeed with Tim taking the water control. Tim with uh, archery ranges going up at the back, as I said, four right there. He might make some skirmishes. There we go, elite skirmisher being upgraded. Um, so it looks like he's gonna go for skirms. He's got a lot of gold. So he could um, could make cavalry archers as well, but at the moment skirmish is being researched and we'll see some elite skirmishes coming out to counter the cavalry archers from Ming here. If Ming can, you know, do a good job of microing and, and using the advantage of speed, then he could still kill a lot of villagers even though Tim is making skirmishes. So Tim now... It's going to be a little bit risky for him. Um, a lot, well, there seem to be a lot of cavalry archers in his base, and Ming, of course, is going to try and pick off as many villagers as he possibly can. He's obviously got quite a lot of threat from the shoreline, though. Tim's starting to really take water control, He's destroying the docks of Ming here. And Ming going to have to move his villagers to the edge of the map, like I said, to make sure they stay safe. Mill coming up, and it looks like Ming might even be thinking about Imperial Age pretty soon. He's got quite a lot of food already. He's got a fair amount of gold and he is well okay for wood right now. Lots and lots of cavalry archers being created and it's going to be a while before Tim manages to take these archery ranges out with his war galleys. So Ming looking pretty good right now with this attack on Tim's base but Tim looking pretty good with the water control so it really is anyone ga anyone's game at this stage though one would assume that Tim definitely has a much larger advantage at this stage due to having that water control. He started making fishing ships as you can see. They are coming back onto the water right now. He's got no threat whatsoever. He can take plenty of fish and then he can get up to the Imperial Age in a reasonable time. But I do think Ming going to be thinking about Imperial Age pretty soon though he has spent a lot of wood right now on these cavalry archers and he's going to have to a lot of gold on these cavalry archers even and he's going to have to keep them safe otherwise it's going to be a lot of resources lost if these uh, elite skirmishers start to take him out I don't know if he got thumb ring it doesn't look like he has but if he did have thumb ring then he might be able to deal with the skirmishers quite effectively he's still making a lot of cavalry archers but I do think he is going to be going imperial pretty soon these villagers have been idle for quite some time and I'm a little bit concerned about that. I thought Tim Ming would have sorted that out a little bit earlier. Quite sloppy there. But uh, right now, quite a few cavalry archers over in Tim's base. He's got a lot more cavalry archers than Tim has um, skirmishers. And he does have extra pierce armor upgrades. So Ming should be able to deal with the skirmishers from Tim here. He's standing on a hill as well. There's no reason not to engage here and just do what damage he can. He should be able to one-shot or two-shot these skirmishers quite easily. But Thumb Ring in this situation, would really help me out. Uh, firing faster would be great, of course. And these cavalry archers, looks like they're not going to be able to get uh, made in time. I think Ming is going to lose this archery range pretty shortly. And Tim is going to lose a lot more villagers as well. Tim, though, still outside of Ming's base, still making fishing ships, taking a lot of fish on the water, and his docks stopped creating fishing ships for now, but those extra, although they are continuing making fishing ships, but those extra ships going to give him such a huge food boost, and his score now is going to start rocketing ahead. If you have a look at the population, it's 151 for Tim, and Ming on 114, starting to fall quite significantly behind, and it's Ming is going to try and pick off some more villagers where he can. Tim with a few uh, cavalry archers of his own, but Ming does have that plus two defensive upgrade, so he should, in theory, be able to kill more villagers and more units from Tim, but it's just a question of how long can he hold or hang in there. Looks like he's about to click up to Imperial, actually. He's got 50 food remaining, and he will be able to click up. He should be able to clear up this uh, this little force from Tim right here, and if he does click up, then he is he going to click up? Is he going to do it? No, he's not. He's going to hang around and, and he's not going to click up to Imperial just yet. He's continuing to make a few more cavalry archers. Making a stable back here. He might even go for some knights because knights, of course, are pretty good for raiding. And they do do well against the skirmishers. So knights and cavalry archer could work out fairly well. And starting to make villagers down at this TC here. I wasn't expecting him to build a TC down here. But then again, he did need the villagers, um, the extra villagers to help him build... <coughs> Pardon me, and uh, and continue his attack 
on Tim over this side. Just clicking up to Imperial right now. Tim gonna be away from Imperial just yet. Stables of his own coming up right now as well. Starting to make some knights also. Cavalry archers coming out from four archery ranges back here compared to the two from Ming. So Ming with an extra stable going up back here and more archery ranges and stables as well. Looks like he's gonna be getting the stable for bloodlines. Oh, unless he's already got bloodlines, let me just check. Uh, yeah, he does have bloodlines. Uh, they both got bloodlines, in fact. And he is going to be making more cavalry archer, it seems. It looks like he's going for knights at all. He just upgraded light cavalry, though, and that's that's kind of cool. I wasn't expecting light cavalry. I thought perhaps he'd go for knights, but no. Light cavalry, pretty good choice, actually. Good raiding unit, and uh, if he upgrades the armor on them, then he will be able to do quite good damage against skirmishes and villagers, even under arrow fire from the TCs here. But it looks like Tim starting to make quite a few knights right now, continuing to produce knights, and knights are simply better than light cavalry, of course, but they do cost more gold, so whether or not Tim can keep his gold high enough, at the moment he's more concerned about food and wood, I think. Uh, it's going to be a long while before he reaches Imperial at this stage, but the worrying thing for Tim right here is that he's not going up to Imperial just yet, and if Ming can just hold on and upgrade these units enough, then he could actually do a really good job of attacking Tim here. Tim hitting population cap on 142, uh, sorry, 42 minutes, 131 population for Ming. It's looking very, very good for Tim right here, actually. Already population capped, Ming starting to lose a lot of units in this battle, and Tim sending knights and cavalry archers over pretty quickly, and of course, if Ming does lose this, then he's going to find himself in a big bit of trouble because he's Imperial and he won't have the units to upgrade and that is a big, big problem uh, for him indeed. I'm going to turn it down a little bit more. It seems really loud for some reason. So it's going to be a very big problem if Ming does lose this battle and it's certainly not looking so good right now. Um, he's struggling to make enough units. He's really out of gold altogether and Tim looking pretty good. He's population capped pretty much. He's got plenty of wood, plenty of gold and he should be able to make a lot of cavalry archers in this situation. He's also got a lot of fishing ships out on the water, which does mean he's going to be gaining a lot of food, and he will be able to advance up to the Imperial Age shortly. But right now, it's not so important for him to be Imperial, because he does have the larger army, he's managing to hold Ming off, and... Ming does not have the resources now to replenish his army here. I think he may have clicked up a little too early and he didn't get that castle up either, which is a bit unfortunate for him. He's got so much stone in the bank, he can afford three castles right now, but he can't make the castles because he just uh, is under too much pressure here. And that is certainly not good. He's up to the Imperial Age. What is he going to be able to do? Well, he can't upgrade, upgrade units just yet. He's having to sell resources here. Looks like he sold some stone there to get Bracer. He's not going to be able to upgrade to Heavy Cavalry Archer just yet. He's not going to be able to upgrade anything at the stable just yet. He simply cannot afford it. And he's going to try and get the uh, the upgrades on his units first. But I think he's going to have a very tough time um, actually finishing off Tim here. Tim's looking very, very strong in this position. Uh, he's going to be able to afford to go up to the Imperial Age pretty soon, of course, with these fishing ships on the water. And he also has got the much bigger army at this stage as well, which is, of course, going to give him a big advantage when it comes to attacking Ming down here. Ming has got an upgrade advantage right now. He's going to come in with these cavalry archer, I think, but I can't see him winning this little battle here. I just don't know how he's going to do it. He'll be able to pick off a few knights, but Tim simply has the numbers, and Ming has only got this, cast, uh, this uh, town centre for sort of defence here. He's going to lose a few villagers, uh, sorry, a few units to the town centre, and Ming now starting to make more units, which is great. But Tim, oops, the Imperial Age, he's got a lot more resources in the bank, and he's got rams coming in. He's got uh, a bit of everything coming in, actually. He's got more knights coming over, he's got more cavalry archers coming over, and he should or in theory, be able to hold Ming off here, but Ming actually starting to push back, and that upgrades, these upgrades even, actually starting to pay off. He's got chemistry as well, which means plus four attack, and that is certainly more than uh, Tim has right here. It looks like Ming is going to push back, and I really wasn't expecting that at all. Ming now with an upgrade advantage, and Tim upgrading to Imperial, so he's going to be slower at creating units here, and Ming might just be able to make something off this attack right now, as uh, starting to clean up these rams, cleaned up his army and Ming taking the score lead. A pretty monumental defense right there. I really was not expecting that from him. But now Tim with a castle right here, gonna be pressuring this area even more and Ming is really cornered. He can't head out this way because there's galleys on the water. He can't really go this way because there's a castle there.
there. And uh, unless he takes the castle down, he's going to be pretty hard pressed to actually defend against that. But uh, Tim slowly getting up to the Imperial Age at long last. Ming getting a castle up of his own and he should be able to get a trebuchet out re reasonably soon making a ram to start taking it down he has the castle it's on the low ground but a trebuchet here which he is making will be able to take that castle out reasonably quickly I think Tim trying to make a little wall off as well and it looks like Ming isn't going to be able to get through. I thought for a second he might be able to, but he's not. And managing to kill off a few villagers, of course, for free. Continuing to take out this castle. The trebuchet on its way out. A second castle going up on the front for Ming right there. And he can afford a third as well. Not sure if this is going to be in range of the water, but if it is, then that is really good news for Ming. He's going to be able to put another castle somewhere around here and keep pushing forwards. He needs to keep his cavalry archer safe. Is he upgrading heavy cavalry archer just yet? Well, no, not just yet. He's not upgrading anything else at the blacksmith and nothing more at the stable either but he certainly has a lot of upgrades on the cavalry archer right now he just needs one more defensive upgrade and of course he needs heavy cavalry archer and party and tactics when he can afford it but right now he's a little bit hard pressed for resources really 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 on edge and if he can actually take this castle down, then he might be in a reasonable situation, in a reasonable position to start pushing Tim back. But Tim, now into the Imperial Age, he's got a lot of resources. He can upgrade to Heavy Cavalry Archer straight away. He's upgrading Forging right now, but he can upgrade the uh, defensive upgrades and offensive upgrades for the Cavalry Archers. He can upgrade Cavalier, which he is doing, which is interesting. He's going for Cavalier right now, and I'm waiting for the Heavy Cavalry Archer. He's not going to do it. That's interesting. I thought maybe he'd have done it by now. Is he getting chemistry? Nope. He's actually pretty slow to get his upgrades in. And it looks like Ming going to start to actually push Tim back here. And this is really sort of boggling my mind. I thought for a second that Tim was really going to start to pressure Ming and actually push him right back and, and kill him off. But no, it's not the case. Tim is going to be finding himself in a bit of a bad spot now as Ming starting to push forwards with upgraded cavalry archers like cavalry. And of course, uh, rams and trebuchets. He's losing a few ships as well. The, the castle is in range. Ming can afford another castle if he decides to build one forwards. And he has got more trebuchets to, to continue his push. Still, just cavalry archer from Tim. No upgrades on there at all. Iron casting and plate barning. It looks like he's simply going to go for cavalier. Maybe he's going to upgrade to uh, paladin. But at the moment, just Cavalier, no Cavalry Archers coming out. Tim trying to put up another castle in defense. But uh, Ming coming forwards now with more trebuchets, coming forwards with more rams. And I don't think that castle is going to stand for long, actually, uh, judging by what I can see so far. Cavalier now coming in for Tim, though. And if he upgrades these to Paladin, that's going to be really strong. But it's going to be so long before he can afford the Paladin upgrade. And really, he's not got that much food and gold to actually continue production of Cavalier at all. I think that's quite a costly decision to make, actually, um, going for Cavalier. Uh, Ming still not upgrading to Heavy Cavalry Archer just yet. That's no real big deal, but uh, he is still managing to hold on just here. This town centre will go down, and uh, I believe Tim Ming just lost his trebuchet. Yeah, he did. He lost his trebuchet there. He's still got a few rams, though, and I think he should be able to deal with the Cavalier reasonably well. The Cavalier fully upgraded now, though, on the defence, and Tim might be on the final offensive upgrade. Nope, not just yet. He's waiting a little bit for now. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty close over this side. I really honestly thought that Ming was going to be dead. And, and then Tim pushed, uh, and then he pushed Tim back. And now it looks like Tim's going to start pushing Ming back. It's very, very close. Tim losing, obviously, a lot of units now. He was on population cap a moment ago. He's now on 160 population. And he does have very few resources left. Ming on the other hand, it's fairly close. They're both very close in resources. Uh, Ming pushing out across the map of course with Eco over this side. Tim with Eco all the way over here as well. Starting to spread out massively and get a really big economy. It's just whether or not they can actually continue unit production for long enough to defend. It uh, doesn't look like we're seeing Hussar upgrade anytime soon. Ming very low on resources now. I think he may have just upgraded to have Heavy Cavalry Archer. Uh, that's Tim, not Ming. Uh, hang on one sec. Ming, I'm pretty sure he just clicked Heavy Cavalry Archer. 
yeah, he's upgraded it, sorry. Um, that's where he spent his resources. So Heavy Cavalry Archer now, this is really good for him. He's going to be able to do a lot of damage versus the um, Cavalier from Tim. And Tim does not have the economy to produce that many Cavaliers right now. So Ming should be able to actually defend and continue to push Tim back. He's going to keep trying to take down this castle. And a lot of Heavy Cavalry Archers out for Ming right now. He's probably already got Parthian Tactics. And all he needs is the final defensive upgrade on these Cavalry archers and he should be okay. Blast Furnace being researched for his like cavalry. Um, he's got them fully upgraded on the defense. We might see Hussar fairly soon but this is nice. Sending a villager over here with a couple of stables. Looks like he's going to try and break down this wall and attack Tim's economy from the back which is really nice to see. But this is really, really good play from Ming. Starting to really push Tim back here. This castle could go down really soon. He's got lots of light cavalry here to kill Tim's eco. He's losing a lot of villagers. And he's got these heavy cavalry archers. And I think Tim made a huge mistake going for cavalier here because he just does not have, he didn't have the economy to support it. He's not got that many stables. He's got four stables. He's got lots more archery ranges. It would have made more sense for him to go for cavalry archer. He had a lot more wood. He's still got a lot of gold. But uh, right now he's not making cavalry cavalier at all and I really do think that uh, heavy cavalry archer would have been the best solution or choice for him at that stage of the game. This castle destined to go down eventually, uh, Ming killing off so many villagers from Tim and I think the castle will go down in just a sec, the second trebuchet coming up for Ming right here and once that castle goes down Tim really doesn't have that much defense, he's got no more castles back here, he's not got enough uh, stone to make another one and it's certainly not looking that promising for him over on the, over on the land. He's got the water control for sure, he's got plenty of fishing ships, but I really don't think he's going to be able to make that much of it. He's starting to add some more cavalier once again, um, but again slowing down production, upgrading Hazar now, which is good for him. He's got the fishing ships of course, so he should have plenty of food income, and he can make a lot of uh, Hazar quite easily. But the problem is, can he make enough? Can he make enough? Because Ming is still massing up these uh, these heavy cavalry archers. He's still making some light cavalry. And if he's starting to make Hazar as well, which he's not upgrading just yet, but if he does, then they're going to be pretty neck and neck still. I think the castle now just about to go down. Two more trebuchet hits and it should be gone, I think. One and two. The castle goes down. And now Tim is defenseless. Ming can start to push forwards with his cavalry archer. And that is exactly what he's going to do. And he should now be able to clear up this army from Tim. And Tim might just GG right here unless he can somehow defend against this many units when he's got so little to defend with um, I don't see really how Ming is gonna Tim is gonna defend he's losing his military production building he's only got four stables back here and he doesn't have that much else back anywhere else which is a little bit worrying he's starting to send some hussars over this side but Ming with a quick wall off managed to defend against that very nicely and now he's gonna send his trebuchets forward and start to take out the town centers from Tim start to take out everything that Tim holds dear and Tim is now starting to make some uh, some more skirmishes once again to so just try and hold Ming off but look at his eco he's got so few resources left and he's got very little population as well Ming almost population capped a few resources as well but he's got a much bigger economy I think at this stage and although he's not got fishing ships he's still doing a very good job of defending um, from the galleys of course and he's doing a very good job of attacking as well uh, which is which is just great for him trebuchet is coming in a game starting to take out this uh, town center and Ming is even going to take some of this gold there's 100 gold right there he'd be mad not to take it uh, he may as well do it it's right there for him and Tim just pretty much suiciding these Tsars here they are going to die very quickly very easily and he's going to have to retreat once again so many Tsars dying right there and uh, this TC will go down I do think Ming is going to win this game right now which is a really nice little sort of comeback for him after losing the water, after being scouted out down here, I was not expecting Tim uh, Ming to come back. He has. He's done a bit of a comeback, and this is really nice stuff from him. Um, going to continue to push into Tim's base. Tim going to find himself without any army in a second because these Tazars were absolutely cut through the elite skirmishes, and Tim is armyless. Ming is population capped, and uh, Tim is about to lose the rest of his economy as well. He's going to hold on a little bit longer. He really does not want to lose this game, of course. But very, very nice play from Ming here.
very good indeed. If you send some cavalry archers back here, back here, uh, Tim is going to lose so many units. More villagers going to die as well as these hussars right now. And it's certainly not looking good for Tim right now. Ming going to have to bring his trebuchets forward a little bit. He could be advancing a little bit faster than he is. Tim still taking gold back here. And he's still not out 100%, but he's certainly not looking good. Loading some villagers up into that transport ship just to get them away safely. That was quite a nice little uh, attack right there, a little plan even. But Ming, looking like he's starting to gain a lot of map coverage now, sending Hazars forwards from these forward stables, and Tim is going to find himself out of gold very shortly as he's lost three relics. He's uh, very low on gold as it is, and once this gold mine runs out, that's it. He's not going to get any more gold from anywhere. Uh, fourth relic over here, which is not collected, but so few villagers for Tim right now. Ming, still population caps, and it looks like all he needs to do is take out these archery ranges, and Tim will have pretty much nothing left. A few skirmishes in each, and it should be enough for Ming to defend against. Uh, should have enough uh, cavalry archers to defend against that. Gonna have to move his cavalry archers in a little bit more though, I think. There's no point attacking markets with them. And Ming gonna move his trebs forward once again. Should be able to take out these uh, buildings pretty easily. Gonna aim for this TC next. And I don't see Tim coming back from this right now. There's too much harassment coming in. He's got too few units. And Ming is gonna be able to just take out everything that uh, Tim has. Coming forward to the siege workshop, I thought perhaps it Perhaps it would be a castle. And Tim does not want to resign, does he? He's going to go for one last sort of stand. He's sending over some villagers over here. A stable on this side. A few hussars are going to come into Ming's um, eco over this side. But Tim's economy, much worse off at this stage. I really don't see how he's going to be able to do enough damage to Ming here to make up for the losses at home. He's going to have to make some... Uh, He's going to have to make quite a lot of Khazars from here um, to do a lot of damage to Ming. Ming can just hide inside of his TCs for a while whilst he finishes off the base from Tim. Coming forwards with more siege workshops. Going to keep making units uh, from there. Maybe rams. Siege rams perhaps. Or not. He's just going to make... Uh absolutely nothing from there. <laughs> he's a great cavalier as well. I think he's kind of just rubbing it in how much gold he's got right now. He's of course got a lot of gold. 1.5k gold, 1.5k food, 3k wood. Uh, Ming is going to be absolutely fine for quite some time right now. And Tim's still going over on this side with some hussars now. He could do some damage to Ming's economy, but Tim just losing so much. He's just struggling for units. So, uh, so sorry, struggling for villagers so, so much. He's got a few um, skirmishes here and there. He's got a few Hazars here and there, but he's really got nothing left on the land. All he's got is his eco on the water, and I just don't see how he's going to come back from this. Sending a few Hazars over to, to uh, Ming's base. Ming trying to attack with villagers. It's not going to work. He's going to lose them all, but um, he might be able to defend against this fairly shortly. He's probably thinking to himself, Ming, uh, Tim, why do you not resign? I've got this game. It's so obviously mine, and uh, <laughs> it really is. Uh, I don't see how Tim is going to win this, so I'm going to speed things up until Tim resigns because this is his game. Ming upgrading to Paladin now, just to rub it in. He's like, come on, I've got so much resources, dude. I'm going to clean up your hazards so easily. And uh, yeah, there we go. Tim resigns. He realizes there's absolutely nothing he can do absolutely wiped off the face of the earth and I thought for a second as I've said already that Ming was going to be really tough uh, or hard pressed to actually defend down here um, Tim I think really could have actually won that and um, really well played by Ming really he did play that one excellently and uh, he deserves that win I think so there we go 1-0 to Ming around uh, 6 game 1 between Ming and Tim and Chinese guys and everything like that. <laughs> game 2 is going to be coming up next. Um, that was a long one. I don't think the next one is quite so long. So, uh, so keep your eye out for that. And